welcome all myself dr m sangeeta associate professor department of mechatronics satyabhama institute of science and technology deemed university today i am going to discuss about the topic microelectromechanical system here i am going to discuss introduction applications components and its fabrication process mems it is a tiny machine that is invisible to our human eye it is used in automobile industries for safety purpose it is used in hearing aids and it is used for diabetic level instruments here mems it is a combination of electrical and mechanical components reinforced in a single chip actually it consists of a sensor mechanical components electrical components electrical components incorporated in a single substrate and they are fabricated using micro machining process such as bulk micro machining process surface micro machining process and lithography actually it senses and get the information from the environment and control the environment its sizes varies from 1 micron to 100 microns exactly to the thickness of the human hair these are the main components of micro electromechanical systems first is sensors micro sensors second one micro electronics then actuators and structures micro sensors is gather all type of information such as thermal electrical chemical and all other information from the surroundings and it will sent into the micro electronics this micro electronics process all the information that is gathered and transferred by the sensors and it will instruct the actuator to activate uh, in the environment and micro structure is structure that is built on the surface of the micro processor now we are going to discuss about mems applications mems having application in various fields i have listed a few ones here first one is biomedical field here it is having lots of applications but i am highlighting two thing it is used to check the intracranial pressure that is mental pressure here we have to inject the chip or pressure sensor inside the brain so it will check the pressure of the brain okay second important one it is used for drug delivery so if you are injecting this microchip inside the human it will deliver the drugs at periodic time it is also having applications in automobile industries very important application is uh, crash sensor for example uh, it is an accelerometer it consists of a mass in the middle layer so what happens whenever the car movement moved in a particular acceleration the mass will also responds to it acceleration that means the mass will also move this movement of the mass is recorded by the sensor that sensor transfers the data of the mass to the microprocessor so in case of accidents the acceleration level is uh, going beyond the critical value at that time the sensor transfers the information to the microprocessor in a microsecond it will activate the airbag so it is not only used for airbag system but also used for vehicle security system inertial brake lights and automatic door lock system then everyone know about gyroscope it is used in our mobiles laptops etc it is used to zoom in zoom out the screen and you, we can able to scroll it up and scroll it down and it is also used to rotate the picture either in landscape and portrait form then mems are used in microphones using that we can communicate to the world and in military it is used to um, in projectile it is used in projectile in order to reach the targets accurately these are some of the advantages and disadvantages when you are going for the advantages of the mems it is um, accurate it is precise and it occupies the less space and less number of components are used only disadvantages is the fabrication and designing of tiny components is difficult then scaling glass if you want to reduce the size of any components we have to follow the scaling glass here 
we are miniaturizing the size of the machine. We are reducing the size of the machine as well as the physical system. So, nowadays it is an ongoing effect for human civilization. So, it becomes, it, it is a demand for an intelligent, robust, multifunctional and low cost consumer product. So, there are two types of scaling slum. Here, scaling in geometry as well as scaling of phenomenological behavior. Scaling in geometry is nothing but reducing the length, breadth and height of a particular component. This can be done with the laws of physics. Scaling of phenomenological behavior is nothing but we are reducing the size along with the material properties. Here while you are scaling the volume as well as surface area will also be reduced. For example, if the length value is reduced by 10 times, the volume is reduced by 1000 times. Similarly, the surface area reduced by 100 times. This is one of the example for scaling in geometry. While you are considering electromotive force, here force is proportional to L to the power 4. If the L is reduced by 10 times, then the force reduced by 10,000 times. Then we will discuss about fabrication of microelectromechanical system. Here, all the electronic components are fabricated in a clean environment. So, here the temperature, air humidity, air purity are maintained at a particular level. So, main objective of this is to reduce the contamination while fabricating a micro components. Here, there is a series of steps from mask fabrication up to characterization. This includes optical photolithography, electronic lithography, thin film deposition, etching, metallization, electrochemical deposition, ion implantation, packaging and then to characterization. Here in case of MEMS devices, small electronic components are incorporated in a single chip. That wafer is made of silicon. In earth, 90 percentage of earth consists of silicon dioxide. Using that, the silicon substrate is manufactured. So, here the silicon is um, extracted from the earth in the form of silicon dioxide. So, first it should be treated like um, in order to get metallurgical graded silicon. Then it is treated further in order to get electronic graded silicon. Then it is further treated in order to get pure silicon. Here, this is a poly silicon manufacture. When you got the metallurgical grade silicon, it should be treated with hydrochloric acid. Then you will be getting tetrahydrosilane, which should be treated with hydrogen in order to get silicon that is electronic grade silicon. This is deposited on the substrate that is using a deposition reactor. Then the pure silicon can be extracted by using two techniques called CZ technique and flow zone te technique. In CZ technique we can able to obtain large wafers. In case of flow zone technique we can able to get small sized wafer. This is the CZ technique. Here the molten silicon that is electronic grade silicon is kept in a furnace. This furnace is coated with silicon dioxide. It is kept in a furnace which will be rotating. Then above that the seed crystal is mounted inside the hanged inside the molten silicon. Due to the heat the silicon get melted and it is deposited over the seed crystal and it can be pulled out in the form of cylindrical in shape and this silicon is melted at the temperature of 14-12 degrees C. This is the silicon ing ingot that is obtained from CZ technique. This is further process to get wafers. Next one float zone technique. Here uh, it is another one process to get the wafer. Here the seed is fused with the MGS silicon and it is heated with radio frequency coil. The furnace used is inert gas furnace. The type of gas that is used is argon, which is used to reduce the impurity. So, these are the fabrication of chip or wafer. 
then mems micro machining techniques are available here the most common technique that are used are surface micro machining bulk micro machining and lithography process here the lithography stands li stands for lithography g stands for galvanoforming that means electroforming and abforming that is stands for molding so surface micro machining means here there will be a substrate over the substrate some machining operation is carried out for example deposition patterning everything um, happening over the surface of the substrate that is called surface micro machining when you are going for bulk micro machining here inside the substrate itself any patterning or etching takes place in order to get the 3d patterned 3D object of any micro electromechanical system. Here, LIGA process consists of the combination of X ray lithography, electroplating, as well as molding. See, these are the application of bulk micro machining process. You can be able to fabricate a tip in atomic force microscope and MEMS needles and switches, hearing aids, probe shanks. This can be manufactured using bulk micro machining process. Here you can able to see in the substrate SiO2 layer where any etching can be taken in order to get the final shape. So this is a best example for bulk micro machining process. Here you can able to get uh, small channels, tubes, everything that can be carved on the substrate itself. So, MEMS used to remove here large amount of silicon substrate in case of bulk micro machining process. The best application in bulk micro machining process is pressure sensor. Here, silicon dioxide layer is deposited over the substrate and some of the over the silicon dioxide layer, the gold film is deposited. Here, some of the parts are etched away in order to form a pressure sensor. So, we can able to fabricate a wheatstone bridge. So, next one, surface micro machine, as I explained, it is used to uh, do carving, etching, deposition over the substrate. It is not like bulk micro machining process where the machining taking place inside the substrate. Here in surface micro machining, the silicon wafers are arranged inside the furnace or a heating elements, either an oxygen or water vapor sent inside this, so it get deposited over the silicon wafer. So when the silicon combined with oxygen gas in order to get SiO2, similarly silicon combined with vapor to get SiO2. This is acting as an insulator in that. Finally, lithographic process, here these are the steps in lithographic process. Here, first the surface is exposed to radiation, the particular pattern developed over the surface by means of electroplating process, we are getting the shape on the surface and we are pouring, by means of molding process, we are pouring the molten metal and you can strip away the final product. Here in the sub ash color thing is a substrate. Here we are coating with PMMA material on here. Then we are exposing this X-ray radiation. This is nothing but a mask. This is a pattern you need in that material. So there the pattern is developed over the material. After that we have to pour the molten metal. Then you have to remove the PMMA material in order to get the final product. These are the step by step explanation. Here, polymethyl acrylate is placed over the substrate. Then, mask with the required shape is placed over the substrate here, then which is exposed to radiation. Then, the particular shape is developed over the surface. Here, by means of electroforming process, we are pouring the molten metal inside the gap. Finally, after polishing, we are removing the PMMA material to get the final product. So, these are the three microfabrication process. Today, we discuss about microelectromechanical components, how, what are the components it is present in that, um, how it is applied in various fields and what are the fabrication process included in that.